Hello, and welcome to The Mind of a Therapist, a podcast where I interview psychotherapists and helping professionals and what they're passionate about in order to provide you with messages of encouragement and hope. I'm your host, Andrew Earl. The Mind of a Therapist is sponsored by Psychological Counseling Services, healing hearts and transforming lives. Look into our intensive at pcsearl.com. In today's interview, we've got a unique episode where my wife, Natalie Earl, and I interview my grandparents, Glenda Earl and Ralph Earl. My grandma, Glenda Earl, has found being a mom rewarding and challenging. She had her hands full with a son that went to high school graduation barefoot and a daughter that holds a record for basketball rebounds. She's a proud grandmother of five wonderful grandchildren and now two great-grandchildren. She's co-led communication skills classes with her husband, Ralph, for several years, and she enjoys watching the changes in relationships. In the early years of her marriage, she taught elementary school, and she has enjoyed traveling with family throughout the years. Uh, My grandfather, Dr. Ralph Earl, is a noted family therapist and psychologist, as well as an author and lecturer. He is past national president of the American Association for Marriage and Family Therapy and is approved supervisor for the American Association of Sex Sex Educators, Counselors, and Therapists. He is a national authority on sex addiction with over 35 years experience working with sexual problems and works extensively with sex, sex offenders. Dr. Earl is an ordained minister and served on the board of directors of the Interfaith Sexual Trauma Institute of St. John's University, Minneapolis. He is founder and president of Psychological Counseling Services in Scottsdale, Arizona. So without further ado, here's the interview with my grandparents. I call Mamon Cuckoo. It'd feel wrong to call you to anything else. So, uh, Mamon Cuckoo, you are. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a younger couple interviewing uh, an older couple. <laughs> um, so, yeah, to, to start things off, I'd be curious just to, to hear how how many years exactly have you two been been married? Eighty five. Did you say eighty five? Oh golly! <laughs> oh, that's a word. Where is that? Our grandson, okay, well, oh, our grandson Andrew didn't yeah. ask. What does it feel like? What does it feel like? <laughs> it was he, how many years? Uh, six. No, factually, sixty-four. Yeah, sixty-four. Four years. Wow, that is a stretch. <laughs> so, Mamma just you know she was thinking about what. Oh my God! What do, how do it feel? Eighty-five. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So what? What's what's been the key? How how have you two uh, managed just to, to stay together for sixty-four years? Not many, not many couples make it that long. I think from my side of it, um, had no idea. Just graduated college going to get married in two weeks. No idea what marriage was. Um, Interesting family. I think you make a commitment. Not all commitments can be kept, but you work as much as you can to make the commitment last. And there are bumps. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes there are big bumps, but love brought you there. So if there's not violence or something, love can certainly mm-hmm. take you on. Yeah, absolutely. I love the verb manage. How long have you managed to stay married? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, I'm a therapist. I tell patients, ma'am, uh, Glenda is nicer than I am. That's true. That helps. Um, and flexibility for me is the deal. If we, uh, uh, when we get rigid, and not flexible, uh, something hits the fan, I won't tell you what it is, and uh, it's tough. So bumps, um, a time in 64 years, some really big bumps. They were painful for both of us. Um, 
one of the things is that I'm aware of right now while we're doing this podcast is way fewer bumps that would be crucial than there used to be. And, uh, and at times still big bumps. Mm-hmm. The, uh, so two human beings, uh, very different backgrounds and they had similar religious backgrounds. The, the parents involved, uh, very different. Very that mom and dad and my mom and dad. And the, the quickie about that is I remember, I, I never heard my parents argue, ever. And my dad was a New Testament theologian and believed that Jesus never got angry. He and I see that differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I was with Glenda and her parents on a trip. And her parents were just arguing a lot. So uh, it's in a family where they, were, where they were more honest with their feelings than my mm-hmm. parents. So trying to mix that up and figure out how to make a marriage work out is difficult. And worthwhile. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Commitment, fle- flexibility. That, mm. that certainly rings true with our our experience so far. And mm-hmm. those, uh, yeah, those bumps. You know, it's you know, and I know it. The two of us have found ourselves in, you know, this relational dance, as Sue Johnson would call it. Uh, you know, kind of these the same conflict patterns coming up again and again and curious if that's been true for you too and then um yeah what what's been helpful uh you know as that relational pattern has 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 come up i don't know how to answer that i mean Mm -hmm. the conflicts come up you can let them take over or the two of you are sometimes after a cooling off period but the two of you have got to decide, you know, how we're going to handle this as a couple yeah. and, and resolve this conflict. It's the longer the conflict stays, the worse it is to get fixed. Yeah, that's a really good <laughs> yeah. The harder it is, not the worse, the harder it is yeah. to get fixed. Yeah, I agree with that. I, uh, for me, a, a biggie, I think it's true of both of us, is... <clears throat> never been a question whether or not we love each other it's never really been a question uh would we rather be married to somebody else that has not been the question and, and uh, it's uh I, I know about me that my personality i'd rather be married than not married it's kind of scary when i what it is to do out to try to find somebody that makes sense because i know that very frequently i don't make sense so no matter who i'd be married to we'd have some tough times in the marriage <laughs> And then uh, that'd be married and not married. And, and one thing I've known, and uh, and I'm pretty sure it's true for Mama as well, is that uh, uh, I don't think either one of us have ever had somebody we'd actually rather get married to. And we've had conflicts, but it, that actually that Mama would say, oh, I, the grass would be green. I really would be happier being married to so-and-so. Or am I thinking that, that's never occurred. Mm. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. That's awesome. No, I mean, I had dated some in high school, but not very much because I was in a different group and I basically was not allowed to dance or go to movies. And that's what everybody did for dates and fun. Mm -hmm. So then I got to college and there were a lot of really neat guys. Uh, Well, I met him before I got to college. He was out recruiting girls for the school. They were in a quartet and the four guys were, that was their job is get all the cute girls to come to school. That's what what we worked on. (laughs) But, you know, we started dating basically exclusively, like after three months of school, after Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, I dated more there than I ever did in high school, but he was always the top. Mm. <laughs> there, nobody else ever came up to where he is. So mm. he stuck. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
that's interesting, the word stuck, because we're stuck with each other. And now, 64 years later, and, and um, I think the fact that some of what you said earlier about some familiar themes, um, I think that is, that has happened at times. Um, however, it's never been about Love, is the love deep? It's never again, never been about well, he's somebody else. My even internal dialogue, my internal family system has never come up with oh, I'd rather be. And the, the flexibility thing is a big deal to me because I can be stubborn as heck, and uh, I'm a stubborn person. And um, um, I think my wife is also stubborn. <laughs> We have talked about that. Grandma's shaking her head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's saying no, but we, for me, the fact that we're both stubborn um, and and have to work it out, stubborn with rigidity and, and not, um, and, uh, so I, that's what I think. But when you say you have to work it out. Oh, I am. You don't have to work it out. You make your choices. Then at that point, is it more important to cultivate something that we've had, or just blow it away because we don't agree? And I, I don't look at marriages as, as have to. Like I said, well, I I agree fully with you. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to think it was a have to. Mm. And that's a big deal. I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. uh, no. Don't feel the have to. Neither one of us would do well with have tos. Yeah, and uh, that's that's. Uh, I'm an ordained minister. Uh, one of the things I'd never never like to see, or would tr try to get discourage somebody, if there's some people listening that was in their wedding ceremony. It was in many wedding ceremonies. I don't like the person. I like the part where it says until death do us part, for exactly what you're talking about. Um, because if it, death do us part means I got to stay in this. Uh, I didn't. I agree with you. That's correct, yeah. big time. Yeah, it's continued choices. Forever. Yeah, that's what it is. Until it becomes senile, we're a couple, <laughs> at least a couple years away from that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. I'm so curious if your marriage has changed from like, are there seasons, and what were those seasons like when you look back on your marriage? Um, and how has it changed over the years? For me, I was such a different person. Um, I knew at that, <coughs> well, I didn't know. I really thought at that point he was going to be a minister. And I knew that was going to be a challenge. Um, and then he went to school and decided to go into theology and that was great. And we had our first church and that was a challenge for me. People criticized our children and we, we were young. He was in school. We were doing the best we could. Um, it was a whole new life for me. And we were there for three years until he graduated. And then he got a church in Las Vegas. And that's an interesting place when you're in your late twenties um, two little kids at home and the husband is in building a church and out trying to get people to church. So he was never home very much. Um, so that season of life was not one of the easier ones. It was a fun one. We really had a great time and met wonderful, wonderful people in Vegas. They were so good to us. Um, then we went to Hacienda Heights and another wonderful church. But the reason we left Vegas is, I think, Ralph didn't feel qualified to handle all of the conflict in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And so we went back to Claremont to get we counseling. And so I always thought we were going back to Vegas to use all this great knowledge. But then he got a chance to start a counseling center in Arizona. So that's a whole nother chapter in life and started that in 70. 
And I think life has kind of been in the same mode for me since then, really. Well, I love listening to you. Thanks for setting this up, Andrew. Because mm -hmm. I'm hearing you and Natalie. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're great That's about good. that. I love your marriage. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's. Um, I think that one of, one of the people that you both know about and been near and dear to our hearts. Her name is Marilyn Murray. I'm mentioning her uh, because she has what you call circles of intimacy. And mm. uh, that, to answer your question, Natalie, I think that my number one circle of intimacy was external validation. When I was a minister and the beginning of when I was a therapist, it wasn't God. Um, I mean, I, I would have said it was God, I think, but I, I don't mm -hmm. understand a whole lot about God. Um, but the external validation career-wise uh, was the big deal. And I am a recovering workaholic who at 85 is still working at times. If anybody wants to say, what the heck are you, you know, you, no, you're not. <laughs> it would have some validity. <laughs> the big change on my side would be that what does matter most is about the external validation. Or I got a lot of that, and it's almost like, so what if that happened? Mm -hmm. At the expense of, um, since you said I'm a grandfather, at the expense of your dad, you grew up in a family, and a daughter, and a wife, and a marriage. So mm -hmm. that was about to prove something that um, took away from the intimacy and the warmth and just being with my family. And so the big change is, I think, Natalie, is, is learning how to be, to really be with Brenda mm -hmm. in a way that was not true earlier. So I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that you find him during, um, including the times when um, I was trying to prove something that was kind of meaningless and lots of very compared to this, very meaningless. Mm -hmm. What did it take that I'm hearing there's, there was a season where uh, you, you were alone with the kids a lot and, and Cuckoo, you were very focused on, on work and achievement at that point. And what did it, what did it take to, to, to kind of re reconnect after that? What did that transition uh, look like? Shift? I think as much as Ralph was working and making a living for our families, we weren't rich, but we lived okay. Um, I think all during that time, no matter how busy or what he was doing, he always attempted to make time to get home for the kids' ball games. Um, Shelly played basketball. <laughs> and um, anyway, and then Marcus with his football and baseball. And... I don't know of many games that you weren't there for. Um, a turning point came when something really big happened in our relationship. And we had to choose at that point, is it worth working on? Or it's been a nice ride, let it go. Mm -hmm. And I think we both made a choice to make it work. I mean, we had... what. 25 years invested in, in a marriage. So, you know, you can say all those memories we're going to try to make with somebody else. But when you've got memories within a family, then work hard to make more memories with that family without starting with another one. And that's not judgmental. Um, a lot of people can't make it and choose not to make it. And that's their choice, our choice was to make it work. Yeah, 23 years into our marriage, uh, I did some really bad things marriage-wise. And uh, it, uh, getting help, and here I'm a therapist now, um, get it. and um, 
getting help that was a wake-up call for me. The, the, the external validation was going great. Um, and the, there was an awareness, awareness in me that, uh, yes, I went to sporting events. Uh, I have my sports. But I also love watching your dad, Marcus, um, and our daughter, Michelle, do sports. And so for that kind of thing, or parent-teacher stuff, I would show up. At the same time, uh, it, there was, there was a, a lack of spiritual connection between Mamma and me that and here I was a minister even at that, that time. And um, so the wake up call was um, for Glenda, Mamma re chose me in spite of my bad deed. And that re choice was a me. Uh, and not without anger and stuff on her side that I want to say thank God very real feeling happening. And um, I'm not trying to sell the product or therapy that I'm a therapist. Uh, I, 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 in training, I had been called a patient in therapy. I'd never really done therapy in my whole life. And when, when I uh, found out more about the dark side of me, through therapy for the first time, A weekend for uh, 16 hours straight and really did therapy and that was the beginning of a different type of marriage and on our 25th anniversary that the fact that it happened we, we had a, a cell, 25th anniversary so, but it was very real the ceremony that we wrote with our all-time favorite minister that, that was, was very real authentic about mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and it's, it, it, it began something that um, I think you've said, Mamma, that, uh, that that time, that season, and my behavior was a trigger. I, I'm not proud of it at all. There's a part of, big part of me, part of me, that wishes it never happened. And then there's another part that realizes that I needed to wake up and have stayed more awake. <laughs> and our marriage, um, in some ways, that 25th anniversary and that ceremony was, uh, and around that time, is when we really got married. Uh, another quickie, Mamma used to say she wished I cherished her way back when. And I think about that a lot, and I think about it as a therapist when I see couples who, who, where there's not a cherishing going on. Boy, I did not understand that. I was a therapist. Uh, uh, and I... Um, I learned what it meant to cherish my wife. Thanks for sharing. You don't always tell me I'm right about everything. <laughs> and I'm not going to say that either one of us is always right. <laughs> I'm <still> stubborn. <laughs> uh, well, I definitely see that cherishing. I mean, bo both ways uh, with you two and the. The fun too, the, and the the banter back and forth that you two. There's a lot of that. Do. Yeah, <laughs> and Natalie was saying thank you. I, I'm so appreciative for the the honesty that that both of you have around those. I mean, yeah, you've been together 64 years. There's been a lot of hardships, and I think that's such an important message mm -hmm. for us. You know five years into marriage, <laughs> potentially 60 more to go. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> yeah, we, we're just starting the journey. <laughs> but um, just that normalization of, 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 of difficulty, of, of ups and downs and, and real, real hardship in relationships, but that choosing again and again to, to be with that person and then as you're choosing to, to look inward and look at the, the, the dark areas that um, we're often blind to. Um, so I found that so important in, in, in our relationship and uh, so so worthwhile and so connecting for us when I, when I'm looking inward and, and then sharing that process as I feel ready to 
with Natalie. That's those are some really sweet moments where we can continue to grow. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Another thing that I was just thinking about when when our kids were in high school, um, Ralph and I thought quite differently on several things about our kids and what was happening. I think for parents to be able to communicate and work that out among themselves mm. without their children listening to why one thinks one way and the other one thinks the other way. Mm. You can still disagree, but I think there's some way to handle it so the children really don't get caught up in your conflict about their behavior. Mm -hmm. And to me that, I did not handle that well. And our kids listened to conflict that I didn't think they needed to hear. We could have done a better job, mm -hmm. but we have wonderful kids. <laughs> it turned out all right. <laughs> and, we've got, and we've got some great, wonderful great grandchildren. We're waiting for the rest of them to appear, but. Um, <laughs> Oh, you know, the I, life goes on and, and the enjoyment. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little, a little hint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to rush it, but. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. yeah, that's such a good insight, you know, because I've heard of like triangulation, you know, in therapy, married to a therapist. <laughs> you just hear, you pick up on language and the, the triangulation of. How important it is for parents to be really solid for the for the really is it to feel safe for the child yeah. and then it, it it's difficult you guys are not you're two different people and you have different ideas and yeah. it's really grew, grew up in different families like you were yeah. talking about earlier so yeah different ideas with different like lived experience of like this is how i know to to raise kids. Yeah, yeah, this is what's right for you, and this is what's right for you, and then how to do how to create some sort of connectedness between that, and and really instill that with you know into your children. And um, it's good. Uh, I grew up with my my parents doing that in front of us also, and it it does it creates like this distrust of what's happening. Do you yeah. know what's going on for me? Or like, can you... What am I causing? Right, yeah. yeah. There can be a lot of, yeah, taking on that for, mm -hmm. for kids. And if you've got kids that are really tender, yeah, it really can hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. There's a, a current book that we use a lot in therapy by guy's name's Terry Wheel. It's become very popular and there's been some stuff come out in the media about it. The, uh, and the book, he titled Us, uh, instead of You and I, Us. And the, uh, the uh, okay, we could have done a much better job, I agree, in terms of ha handling the arguing, uh, most of the time, not with the kids listening. And then again, on my side, my parents never argue. That's yeah. also a problem. I right. see that with other and so learning how to handle anger, which is a big deal, and yeah. uh, learning how to handle it uh, when you never heard it, and mm -hmm. not supposed to be angry, stuffing it's not a good deal. Mm -hmm. And then the other it just marriage is difficult. Scott Peck said life's difficult. Marriage is difficult. And uh -huh. I I feel very blessed that sixty four years down the road that, it, that uh, both of us say that our marriage is the best it's ever been. Mm -hmm. and, and we're still working on it. And we still do, by the way, marriage therapy. We have in the last year. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, until senility or psychosis or something, or death, <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe there will be times when we will see our therapist because mm -hmm. we still need that person at times. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love that message too of, of you know, you're a therapist, my dad, I'm a therapist. We all talk about how it's a parallel process, you know, it's not not as though clinicians are exempt from needing their own psychotherapy. Nice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So you're there's this a song uh, I forget who, who 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 sings it, but she talks about how her and her partner are like a, a fine wine. They get they get better as as the relationship, and that's been true for you too. It's the relationships mm-hmm. evolved, and you've developed this fondness and admiration for each other throughout the, and cherish each other. Um, that, that's so nice. I was just I think taking both of us to decide it's worth working on. Yeah, that commitment piece is yep. as big, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. interesting how big we're both eighty-five years old. And I'm hoping Careful. That, <laughs> I'm hoping that um, I predeceased Mamba. She knows that. It's yes. I, uh, I, I used to think I was so independent. I mean, I still seem to know, so to speak. And mm. I'm more dependent on her than she is on me, and she loves me deeply. It's you know it's bullshit. Not, favorite word about the in the <laughs> podcast that about that it was more of a narcissistic trait in me that you know, it's not it was not true so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm very dependent on you and i'm grateful big time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. how do you feel about that ma'am do you, do you want him to <laughs> well you know I, I'm a good girl. I'm ready to go anytime. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah, I, we, we are very different. Um, I am extremely <laughs> independent, and Ralph likes people around and likes to talk, and I don't like to do a lot of talking. <laughs> and so that at times, do you agree? Yeah. What? Yes. That, that at times gets to be a, a we is a bit of a conflict. Mm. Um, when I'm sick, let me go to sleep, mm. cuddle up with my heating pad when he's sick. And you notice it's with a heating pad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not against heating pads. I used one last night. I just want to make sure everybody heard that. Cuddle up with my heating pad. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Yeah, I kind of. Don't you dare say it. But Ralph wants a little attention when he's not feeling well, and I was never raised with learning how to do that real well. I can do it with children. And and dogs. And And dogs. dogs. Not cats. (laughs) (laughs) But I... It, it is hard, and that that is still something after this many years still needs work. Yeah. Lots of work. Yeah. But it'll come. Yeah. We're going to move to a retirement home, and we're going to learn all new kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Instant change when we move into this place back in Maine. Yeah. It's going to be transformational just by walking in there, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Change of venue, but I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, would, I, I think that is what you brought up, Mamaws, and is our number one issue. This is still an issue, I think, mm-hmm. is uh, the last couple of days. Uh, both of us have felt not so hot at times, mm-hmm. and especially you. And, and uh, I, think, I think I have part of the answer is cuddle her at the, along with the. the <laughs> she's shaking <laughs> no, along with I, I want to count the <laughs> And it's just my, it's, it comes from my own insecurity. Mm. That's where it comes, and so we are working on that. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. That's it. That and and that's just like what I want to continue to hone in on again is that it's it's just continual process of of working through. It's not, you know. I think growing <coughs> up, I had this idea of you get married and it's happy ever after i saw these disney films i grew up (laughs) watching i guess um and uh but it's 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 a process it's a a working through process that 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 doesn't doesn't really end it just no it does not end but we, we need to continue to make ourselves available to that intensity i think of and being uncomfortable with our partner and really letting Letting them in and letting them see us when when we feel that's that's right because yeah it's a, that's just a part of you know it's a part of the, the relational dance and, 
That's really interesting what you're saying to me, really. I mean, Mama is a safe person to open up to. So I'm grateful because there are people out there who are not safe to yeah. open up to. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are incredibly safe to open up to. Um, I'm grateful. I just solved the whole problem. Oh, oh listen up, everybody. <laughs> Downstairs in that chair, there's a teddy bear about four feet. <laughs> I'm going to bring that up the next time you don't feel good. <laughs> you suggested that before. I love teddy bears. We have people go to build a bear. However, <laughs> that teddy bear is not a good thing to do for you. <laughs> that, that ain't going to work. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Well, do you have any other questions that are coming to mind now? No, I can't think of any. I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation and uh, anything else that's up up for you, <coughs> either of you that you've been, that you'd like to share? Anything that's come up that you didn't get to share? I just would like to say it is so great that the two of you are open to learning and even at this age looking at different ways, both of you not just one of you, but both of you. And um, and I think that, I'm sorry, but that is another thing. In our early married life, when Ralph was going, after we moved to Arizona, and he was a psychologist, and he was going to all these conferences everywhere, I went with him, and I learned stuff that he learned, or we would go to a different, almost always went to a different meeting, come back and share. And know what's going on, not much what's going on in my life, but knowing what was going on in his life, it was really, it was a good experience for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I did want to share that. That's that's a fun part. Yeah. yeah. Kind of bonded. I'm amazed the two of you work together so well because sometimes... I'm amazed too. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes... <laughs> family, well, Glenda and I, when we were teaching the course, there were times we, for communication, way, going way, way back, um, the, uh, you're handling this so well right now. So as a grandpa, very proud of you two mm -hmm. that way. And uh, we can learn from you. Mm -hmm. We can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. It's nice to be with you. Uh, yes. You too as well. And before we wrap up here, uh, are there any resources you'd want to leave our listeners with? Any any books, uh, websites that that could be helpful for people that have been helpful for you too, maybe relationally? Well, I mentioned one Terry Reel's book, yeah, uh, Terry Reel's titled book. "Us," which has come out in the last year, uh, and how to how to move from you and I to an us at the same time and still be individuals. He was real clear about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the, the, the interpersonal communication puts out a packet that I highly recommend to anybody. Um, edited and done by Sherrod Miller and Phyllis. Uh, it, it has to do with where you, there's a, in the packet, a book for both people in a coupleship, whether gay or lesbian or heterosexual is irrelevant because community went a long time to get communication problems seem to cross all any kind of boundaries that way as well mm -hmm. as the ethnic boundaries and uh, and there's a in within that packet a map or two maps one is a listening map and the other being uh, a map for the other person to be a talker and highly recommend that mm -hmm. in, in the marriage and family therapy field the research year of many years has shown that to be really productive mm -hmm. and if needed like I needed, we need couples therapy. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any that you want to share, Mamma? No, no, just thank you for the two of you. Yeah. Aww. Thank you for sharing you with us. Aww, absolutely. You too. And then the, the question I generally like to end the interviews with is, uh, do you have a message of hope that you'd like to leave the listeners with? A message of hope. Message of hope. Yeah. That's my, that is literally my favorite word in therapy. I wrote a book called Hope with Simon and Schuster. Um, I hope existentially that Clint and I, Mamma and I, are able to, uh, which we are, to have a, to evolve 
and have the best relationship we've ever had. Um, so can anybody else do that? And mm -hmm. being open to collaborating and learning how to listen better and, how, and to get help when needed. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I think that unfortunately, an awful lot of couples never go for help. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there are people out there that don't go in for help. And, and stereotypically, it is more frequently the male who would think that, and uh, the mm -hmm. people who would uh, just, that, uh, that it's worthwhile. Because um, starting all over again, I would not want to start all over again with somebody else, put it that way. Yeah, I just think the hope is that you'll see a reason you chose somebody. There was something there. Mm -hmm. Maybe something horrible evolved within the relationship, but then that's a whole other thing. But if if people are still decent people, you loved each other, so look for that again before yeah. you want to give it up. That's great. And that's it. That's beautiful. Uh, well, thank you too so much yeah. for for doing this. It's been it's, it's been really great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. It's scary. I know. <laughs>。Please press the subscribe button, as well as rating and reviewing our podcast. This helps others connect with what you've been hearing. If you have any questions, please contact us at themindofatherapist@gmail.com. These questions will be kept anonymous. I want to thank Eric Price for the wonderful music you hear in this podcast. Additionally, this podcast was created to provide accurate and authoritative information on the subject matter. Although we are interviewing licensed therapists, they are not your therapists. This podcast is not intended to serve as direct medical advice and should not be used as a substitute for direct professional help. It is given with the understanding that neither the host, publisher, guests, or PCS are rendering legal clinical or other professional information. If you need a professional, we encourage you to find one. Visit Psychology Today to connect with a licensed clinician near you.